pride and a huge amount of money at stake now on BBC Two, can anyone crack the eggheads? These five people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Hello, welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. You might recognise them as they've won some of the country's toughest quiz shows. They are the Eggheads. And our challengers today are the Highbury players. The team are all members of an amateur dramatics group based in Highbury in Hampshire. And Captain Janie has been treading the boards for 25 years. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Janie, I'm 50 and I'm a civil servant. Hi, I'm John, I'm 40 and I'm a software engineer. Hi, I'm Steph, I'm 32 and I'm a biomedical scientist. Hello, I'm Jackie, I'm 44 and I'm a learning support assistant. Hi, I'm Stephen, I'm 55 and I'm a chartered accountant. OK, welcome to you then, Highbury Players. I love amateur dramatics. Tell me about some of the productions you put on with the Highbury Players. Well, we tend to favour comedies because they go down better. And I guess without Alan Aitbourne, we would have been really <laughs> stuck for Out a play business. or two. But the nicest play I've done recently, um, I had to play this really dotty old lady in her 80s who sort of went around bumping people off. And that was great. I really enjoyed that, doing something different. Such Brilliant. A for you, oh, it was. No, yeah, I, I can was, imagine. Well, as you mentioned bumping people off, that's uh, really what we want you to do here today bump a few eggheads out of uh, the final round in these head to heads. Let me tell you what's been going on. Every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Highbury players, the eggheads have won the last 59 games, which means £60,000. Says you can't beat the eggheads. Oh, yeah. Let's see what you can do. Maybe it could be yours. We'll play a head-to-head -head then. It's uh, science. So who'd like to play I science? I think we know who's going to do science. that. We did science, yeah. didn't we? Happy to do science? Yeah, I'll do science one. OK, Steph, <laughs> who would you like to play from the eggheads? Oh. Any one of that lovely oh. lot. Oh. Any ideas? How about yeah. CJ? He, he yeah. looks sort of art and farty. He doesn't really look sort of art and farty CJ. I think so. Let's go for CJ. OK. OK. Yeah. 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 OK, yeah, let's have uh, Steph and arty farty CJ <laughs> into the question <laughs> room then, please. So, um, Steph. Do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go second. I mean, CJ faces this one. CJ, which small muscular sac that lies directly beneath the liver in humans is used to store bile and can occasionally contain hard, stone-like solid deposits? Is it the appendix, the solar plexus or the gallbladder? Shouldn't you be asking this to Daphne? She's the expert on bile. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get him. Just wait till he comes back. But anyway, it would be the gallbladder. The gallbladder, uh, hard stone like deposits, the rest of it. Yes, sir, it's the right answer, CJ. So one to you. Um, okay, Steph, let's get you off the mark. The Dutch spectacle makers, Hans and Zacharias Janssen, played a major role in the development of which piece of scientific equipment? The microscope, the centrifuge, or the particle accelerator? Ooh, OK. Um, I don't think it's a particle accelerator. We attempted to go for microscope because spectacle makers working do things like magnification, glass, types of glass. I think that's probably the most likely one, I think, out of the three. So by process of deduction, I think I'll go for microscope for that one. Uh, yep, that's the correct answer, Bye. the microscope. <laughs> OK, CJ. The land race, originally bred in Denmark, is a variety of which creature? Horse, pig or dog? My apologies, but it's just going to be a blind guess out of the three. Um, pig. I have absolutely no idea. So this is you being a, uh, a vegetarian, isn't it? Most people think Danish. What goes with Danish? Oink. Bacon. Pig. It's the right answer, yes. Yeah. He struggled. The land race so was uh, originally bred in Denmark is a variety of pig. So, Steph, this to draw level, what type of creature was the tarpan, 
which became extinct at the end of the 19th century. There are the choices, eagle, horse or big cat. Ooh, um, I know there's sort of a horsey zebra thing called a quagga, but I think that was, became extinct. But, um, ooh. I mean, it sounds like it should be a big cat species. The name sounds vaguely apt, so I think I'd have to go for big cat. Big cat for that one. A yeah. Tarpan. Should have been, but it's a horse. Oh, Tarpan, oh, horsey. Oh, I know that now. Ah, uh, you know that <laughs> now. Yes. Third question, CJ. In 1998, the psychologist Francis Rauscher claimed that her lab rats ran faster and more accurately through mazes after listening to which stimulus: thrash metal, classical music, or white noise. This one must have just passed me by. <laughs> I just want it to be thrash metal, but is that just too <laughs> silly? <laughs> I haven't heard this, but simply because I just so want it to be true, I'm going to say thrash metal. I just really want it to be true. Yeah, thrash metal running fast, if you can understand that, but the more accurately bit, I think it's about concentration as well, it's classical it's music. Classical. You kind of just <laughs> wanted it to be thrash metal, I'm afraid we can't make it so, CJ. But it's good news for you, Steph, it means you face another question to uh, try and level it up and take us into sudden death. The question is this, in December 2006, the World Wildlife Fund for Nature announced that over 50 new species of flora and fauna had been discovered in the previous 12 months on which island? Madagascar, Borneo or Sumatra? Ooh, I think I might have a, more of an inkling with this one. Um, I don't know, they all sound very, like the sort of place where that would happen, but I think for some reason Mag Madagascar rings a bell. I know there's like, it's a very lush, sort of um, verdant type place with lots of different species, so I'll go for that one. Do you know, when I first looked at the question and um, I remember doing the story, I thought Madagascar, it's not. It's not Madagascar, it's no. Borneo. Yeah. Oh, no. It is Borneo, <laughs> which, which means um, pretty low scoring round there, but uh, CJ squeaked through 2 1. It uh, means, Steph, we won't be having you in the final round, but you can still come back and help the Highbury players as they yeah. select their players against um, the rest of the eggheads. <laughs> Would you both please return to the studio? So, first blood to the eggheads, but uh, very early days. Let's play another round. It's going to be sport. Who'd like to play then? Can't be Steph, but uh, <laughs> <we're all arrested. laughs> yeah, there, there aren't six players there, Stephen. We agreed, remember? Oh, did we? It was okay. democratic. Oh, yes. Well, okay, apart right. from you. It wasn't unanimous, but it was. <laughs> right. democratic. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You were elected then. Yes. 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 Yeah. Which uh, egghead would you like to play apart from CJ? Oh, didn't we say that we thought Judith maybe? Oh, Daphne. Can we be no, really no. sexist and say we'll have a woman for sport? Yeah. Well, you happy to play against <laughs> Judith? Okay, Judith. Yeah. Judith, please. Stephen's barely opened his mouth. He just nods. He goes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do you tell me? <laughs> OK, let's have uh, Stephen and Judith into the question room, please. Stephen, it's uh, sport. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. Good luck with it, Stephen. Here's your first question. Which sport takes place in a dojo? Sumo wrestling, archery or squash? Well, I did play squash when I was younger and I never heard the word dojo. Um, dojo does sound far eastern, so I'll go with uh, sumo wrestling. Those big chaps grabbing onto each other's nappies. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sumo wrestling is the right answer. Well Yay! done. Yay! <laughs> Judith, in March 2005, Stuart Pearce became the manager of which Premiership football team? Manchester City, Sheffield United, or Tottenham Hotspur? It's cruel of me, I know, but I just do love to see Judith in these <laughs> questions. I know it's sort of baffling to you, isn't it? Because you know yeah. every inch of every football ground, oh, every if only, player. if only. Um, I don't think it's Sheffield United. I think it's Tottenham. Spurs. To oh, a spur oh, bit of extra information there, yes, <laughs> I like that. Where do they play Tottenham, then? Um, White Hart Lane, is that right? <laughs> Very impressed. Yeah. But it's the wrong answer. Oh. <laughs> What's it, Manchester it's, City? No, it's Manchester City, yes. Which means a chance for you, Stephen, to go into a 2-0 lead. Synchronised swimming, rhythmic gymnastics and which other sports are the only Olympic disciplines in which only women can compete? 
bowls, beach volleyball or softball? Well, it's not bowls because bowls, I know that men can compete. So it's either beach volleyball or softball. I, I'll go for beach volleyball. Beach volleyball? Yes. It's not beach volleyball. No. It's softball. Mm. The answer is softball, not beach volleyball. So a let off for Judith. You can level it up if you get off the mark with this one, Judith. Which British driver won the 1976 Formula One Championship? Nigel Mansell, James Hunt or Jackie Stewart? I think Nigel Mansell was later. I think it might be James Hunt. OK. Yes. Yep. James Hunt, 1976. Spot on. Absolutely right, Judith. There you are. Leveled it up. Stephen, your third question to go into the lead again. The 1955 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award winner, Gordon Pirrie, was a leading figure in which sport? Swimming, athletics or rowing? I, I know the answer to this. It's, it's athletics. Athletics? It's the right answer, Stephen. Yay. Yes. Yay. Back on track. Well done. Well... Judith's got to try and save it. Judith, in which year was tennis introduced as an official Olympic sport after a break of over 50 years? 1968, 1976 or 1988? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it's been going that long as an Olympic sport. I think I'm going to try 88. OK, 1988? Yes. 1988 is correct, Judith. We go to sudden death. That means we're going to remove those choices you've been seeing up to this point. Stephen, which former world middleweight champion boxer retired from the sport in 1987 after losing a controversial points decision to Sugar Ray Leonard? Uh, 1987, that's 20, 20 years ago. Um, wasn't Stracy. Uh, Conte. I'll go for Conte. OK. Conte. John Conte. It's, it's, um, it's not... It's Marvin Hagler. Marvellous oh, Marvin. Yeah, Marvellous Marvin, Marvin Hagler. Yeah. Marvellous Marvin. <laughs> so, Judith, a chance to win it. Here's the question. In November 2006, who was announced as the next captain of the United States Ryder Cup team? It's somebody who's retired, isn't it? Um... Furick. Furick? Yes. Jim okay. Furick? And you think he's retired, do you? Um, no, I don't think he's <laughs> retired, actually. I think he's still playing. Yeah. Rather well, in actual fact. Uh, but, you know, always right to have a guess, isn't it? American golfer. Yep. It's uh, not Jim Furick. It's a wrong answer. Anyone tell me from the eggheads? No. Well, Corey Paving, is it? No. Uh, couples? It's tricky one. Fred Couples? No. Azinger? Don't they know? Third go. Uh, no, CJ well, got it after easy. about four <laughs> guesses. Paul Azinger. Would have been interesting if that question had been in the final round for the eggheads. Might have cost them the money. Which means it's good news for you, Stephen. You get another question. Which baseball coach was well known for his nonsensical post-match comments, such as, it's deja vu all over again, and baseball is 90% physical, the other half is mental? I don't know. Um, I will say someone like Lou Watkins. Lou Watkins. Watkins. OK. Right. It's deja vu all over again. I think... Yeah. Everyone knows that, but it was actually said by Yogi Berra. <laughs> Yogi Berra. OK, Judith, another chance. What was the nickname of the British tennis player Henry Wilfred Austin, a four-time winner of the Davis Cup in the 1930s? You won't believe it. I know it. It's Bunny. Yes. Funny nickname. It is a funny nickname. It's right, though. It is the right answer. <laughs> well done, Judith. You're through to the final round, and you've won another sport category. Stephen... It just wouldn't go right for you, would it? Would just every time Judith slipped up, you did as well. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, as it stands now, um, the Highbury players, believe it or not, have lost two brains from the final round. It doesn't seem like that. Yeah. It doesn't seem like, I just somehow thought you should have won that, Stephen. But, uh, as I say, it just didn't go for you in the question room, did it? Listen, we've got two more head-to-heads, so a chance to even it up in the final round. Two eggheads could potentially fall over the next two rounds. This one is geography. Who'd like to play? And it's uh, Janie, John or Jackie? I'll go, I'll go. Sure. Yes, I'll go. I'm going, Dermot. OK, Jackie, you're not going. I mean, going yeah, into the I'm question, going, I know. Yes, right. we had a choice. Yes, I'm uh, going next. Now, who would you like to play? Um, <laughs> CJ and Judith have played, so it's Chris, Daphne or Kevin? 
Eeny, meeny, Ooh, miny, it is a case of eeny, meeny, miny, mo, actually. Um, I think I'll choose Daphne solely because I love her earrings. <laughs> have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Good spot there, Jackie. Yes. Yeah. Across the studio. OK, Jackie and Daphne, would you both please take your positions in the question room? Jackie, would you like to go first or second? Let's think. I think I'd probably like to go second, if I may. Of course you can, Jackie. That means this first question is yours. Daphne, on which body of water is the city of Tel Aviv situated? The Caspian Sea, the Mediterranean Sea or the Black Sea? <laughs> um, well, it's obviously the Mediterranean Sea, isn't it? Because the other two are... <laughs> well, yeah. The other two don't have Tel Aviv on them, is it? No. <laughs> right, yep, that's the right answer. Well Sorry. done. OK, Jackie, your question. Basel and Lausanne are cities in which European country? Switzerland, Romania or Denmark? Well, on the way up on the train, we had a good discussion about Switzerland and that neither of those two names came up when we were discussing cities. Um, from my geography at school, I don't actually remember them being in Denmark. They don't sound familiar from Denmark, which leaves Romania. I think I'm going to have to choose Romania, please. Okay. And while we're discussing Switzerland on the way up, you're not thinking of staging the sound of music or something? <laughs> no, if I was ashamed to say we were discussing which was the capital, actually, because ah. we had a little bit of an argument. Yeah. All right. Well, that might be a question in Egghead, so I won't enlighten you. And uh, also, Basel and Lausanne are in Switzerland. Yes, oh. they are. Oh, dear. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's wrong. Not Romania. Second question, Daphne. The majority of the Atacama Desert is in which country? Colombia, Chile or Venezuela? The driest... I think it's the driest desert in the world and it's in Chile. The majority of the Atacama Desert is in Chile, it's correct, Daphne. So, 2-0, we need to get you <laughs> off the mark desperately, Jackie, with this one, then. What is the most southerly city within the continental USA? Los Angeles, Houston or Key West? Oh, dear, if I don't get to this, my mother is going to be very ashamed of me, being that she lives in the USA. I would say Florida is lower down than Texas, where Houston is. So I'm going to go for Key West. Key West. Much better, yes, that's the right answer, Yay! Key West. Sully City within the continental USA, very good. <laughs> Daphne, which Canadian city lies at the confluence of the St Lawrence and St Charles rivers? Quebec, Winnipeg or Vancouver? Ooh, um... I don't think it's Winnipeg. I think the St Lawrence is um, over on... Oh, what? I can't tell my east from my west, but I think it's Quebec. It is Quebec. It's the right answer, Daphne. You've won this round. I know you tried your best, Jackie. It just, it just didn't go for you, did it? Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, Highbury players, you've now lost three brains from the final round. I know there's some cunning plan going on here, but <laughs> probably a good time now to, to knock out one of these eggheads. It's uh, entertainment, at last, entertainment. Janie or John to play? Who's better on general oh, knowledge? Oh, you're probably you better on... I see you're, you're better, better on general knowledge. Yeah, you're better so general knowledge. Really I think yeah. John will be best. Yeah. I'll do entertainment, because yeah. you're better so at general broad, knowledge. It's so broad, isn't it? Yeah. OK. So yeah. OK. Yeah. OK, John. Okay. And uh, Kevin or Chris? I will go for... <laughs> Chris, because he's got a striped shirt. OK, uh, John and Chris, into the question room, then, please. So, John, would you like to go first or second? Um, I think I'd like to go first, please. OK, good luck, John. It's entertainment. This is your question. Bring It All Back was the debut single for which band in 1999? Spice Girls, Steps or S Club 7? I bet. I'll bet Steph is uh, going, he'll know this, he'll know this, he'll really, really know this. And it's really embarrassing that I know it's S Club 7. <laughs> you didn't even have to think about that, did I you? I really didn't need to think <laughs> about that. Still lives forever in the memory, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it's the right answer, S Club 7, bring it all back. Good start. OK, Yay! Chris, your Woo! question. Tom Hanks received his first ever Oscar nomination for his role in which 1988 film? Big Bachelor Party or Saving Private Ryan? 
Well, it wasn't Saving Private Ryan, that was much later. And I think Big was sort of mid-90s, so it must have been Bachelor Party. It's Big. Hmm? <laughs> Not Bachelor Party, yeah. Got those in the wrong order. I think a Bachelor Party came a long time before Big, and then Saving mm -hmm. Private Ryan a long time after that. So, good news for you, John. You've got the advantage. See if you can extend the lead then with this. What was the name of the waitress played by Connie Booth in the TV sitcom 40 Towers? Ellie, Polly or Jenny? Thanks for making it easy by making them all end the same. Um, I think, actually, I think it's Polly. Okay. I'll go for Polly. OK. Polly, it's correct, 2-0. <laughs> <two nil. laughs> Which means Chris might only face one more question. Who played the role of Tim in the original British version of the TV sitcom The Office? Martin Freeman, Mackenzie Crook or Stephen Merchant? <sighs> Never seen it. And Ricky Gervais isn't there, so it's not him. But I believe he works a fair bit with Stephen Merchant, so I'll say Stephen Merchant. You really haven't seen it, and we're not going to see much more of you. It's the wrong answer. It's Martin Freeman. <laughs> hey! You've beaten him. You're through to the final round, John. Would you please come back and join your teams? So, it's what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost those head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Steph, Jackie and Stephen from the Highbury Players and Chris from the Eggheads, would you please leave the studio? So, Janie and John, you're playing to win the Highbury Players £60,000. Judith, Kevin, CJ and Daphne, you're playing for something which money can't buy, the Egghead's reputation. As normal, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. The questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. Highbury players, the question is, are your two brains better than the Egghead's four? Janie and John, would you like to go first or second? I'd rather go first. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah, I agree. We will go first, please. OK, let's have the first question, then. Could be £60,000 at stake here. The nursery rhyme, ring a ring a roses is traditionally believed to be historically connected to which disease? Scarlet fever, bubonic plague or trench foot? It must be the it is, it's bubonic definitely. plague, it is. it was the black death at yeah. the time. Yeah, and the roses are something to do with the sort of like early aromatherapy and that's how they... <laughs> no, seriously, somebody told me this the other day. That's how they, they try to sort of treat it. And... Rather than just throw flowers on people to make them not smell no. so bad? No. Oh. No, that's we... how they dealt with it. Oh, right, fair sure. I think we're going bubonic plague. Bubonic plague. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Rest... Yeah, won't make any difference to it. <laughs> it's the right answer, bubonic plague. Yes. Yeah. And the posies, you're right, they thought they were to ward off the plague. OK. Eggheads, the TV personality Russell Grant is particularly well known for his skills in which area? Astrology, interior design or dance? Eating. How can, how can you think <laughs> of a pseudo-science? Yeah. Well, yes, you yeah, yeah. could debate the philosophy of it endlessly. But is it astrology? <laughs> astrology, yes, yeah. particularly well known for its skills in astrology. Yeah. Probably very good at interior design and dance as well, we don't know. <laughs> it's uh, the right answer, eggheads. So, back to you then, Highbury players, for your second question. Larry Adler was best known for his expertise on which musical instrument? Flute, harmonica or violin? Wasn't he, like... Was he like an American vaudeville type guy? Yes, he was. So, I would have thought from that, a harmonica would be the most likely. Unless he was a virtuoso violinist. <laughs> oh, I don't really know, but, you mm. know, we have to come up with something, and I would say violin. But if you okay. have strong feelings I the other way, even feelings. if they just got feelings, I'm quite happy to defer to you. No, the, um... <sighs> Go violin. Because we don't actually know, do we? We don't. We don't, so we'll go violin. We'll go violin. Violin, Larry Adler, best known for his expertise on which mm. musical instrument. It's harmonica. Oh, oh no! no. That don't! Was, that would have been my last choice. <laughs> Should have gone with the gut. Teamwork, yes. Right, well, Egghead's a chance to go into the lead. Your second question. Which song from the Beatles album Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band ends with a single note that is sustained for 40 seconds. Is it She's Leaving Home, A Day in the Life, or Getting Better? I, I just remember... I'm trying to... Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely not getting better, anyhow. A Day in the Life. I can't remember. 
tune. I, I don't, to be honest, I don't even know those two songs. I, I just remember, I mean, that one I do know. Yeah. And I just remember the voice training off at the end and then yeah. just... That makes sense. End. But yeah. no, no, I don't know, but that's the one I would go for. That's the best we've got, I think. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. No, I don't know. Um, right, we don't actually know it, so our best guess is she's leaving home. OK, she's leaving home. Well, hybrid players, she's leaving home. It's the wrong answer. Oh, great. I thought it was that too. <laughs> it's a day in the life. A day in the life. I think Chris knew that. Chris knew that, yeah. and uh, he was removed. So, hybrid players. What is the name of the Mediterranean plant which was popularly believed in medieval times to shriek when pulled from the ground? Comfrey, hemlock or mandrake? You say what you think, first of all. I, I think it's mandrake so because I. I think they do it in Harry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter, that's right. And I can give no better answer than no, that. No, they do, because they have to have those earphones on because it will kill mm. them because it's so loud, isn't it? And it's definitely a mandrake. That's what we're going for. Yeah. Mandrake. Mandrake? Yeah. It's the right answer, mandrake. Yeah, well <laughs> OK. Eggheads, the American Dick Trickle was a leading name in which sport in the 20th century? NASCAR racing, rodeo or surfing? I've never heard of it. No. But purely on the basis that I've heard of somebody called Cole Trickle, who I think, but I don't know, is involved with NASCAR, well, is involved with motor racing. Uh, and since they tend to have dynasties in motor racing in these American events, I would say NASCAR racing. NASCAR racing, to save your reputation, keep the run going. Dick Trickle was a leading name in NASCAR racing. It's the oh, right man. answer, Eggheads. Oh, oh, Not two in a row wrong. Brilliant. Takes us to sudden death. Highbury players, good luck with this. Uh, which yellowish brown colour takes its name from the Persian for dust coloured? It wouldn't be beige, would it? Yellowy brown. Khaki isn't yellowy brown, is it? And it's not Persian, is it? Khaki? No, it's That'd be Indian. Indian. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to stick with my first answer this time. <laughs> mm. Tawny. Tawny sort of yellowy brown, isn't it? Tawny owl. That's a bit of yellowy brown colour. I'd say that would be more brown. Do you think so? Yeah. You just want beige, don't you? I do, because I, I changed my mind on the harmonica, mm. and it's always good to go with your gut. No. Go on, then. Go with... I don't think it is, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I don't have anything better to offer. Yeah, go we're going to go for beige. Beige is your answer. Beige. It's not the answer. Eggheads, do you know if it was your question? Khaki. Khaki. Oh, you said khaki! Ah. Well, a chance for the Eggheads to win it, though. Eggheads, by what name are the members of the Unification Church better known? Moonies. Moonies. Yeah. Uh, they're known as Moonies after their founder, yeah. Sun Myung Moon. So, Moonies. And you plunge the knife. It's the right answer, Eggheads. Yeah. You've won. Bad luck, hybrid players. But uh, it means the eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. That winning streak just goes on. I'm afraid you won't be going home with the £60,000, which means the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, congratulations. Can anyone beat you? Join us next time to see if the new challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. £61,000 says they don't. Until then, goodbye. Harj and Laura are the chosen two, preparing for the big cook-off in Kitchen Criminals next. And at seven, late spring brings a spurt of growth in the gardener's year.